Have you ever been shocked and frightened so much that time seemed to slow down? Did you feel hyper alert? Did your heart rate and breathing rate jump up? Did your body tense up and poise for action? And then even when you realised that you weren't in danger after all, found it really difficult to calm back down? If so, you experience a system with deep evolutionary roots. In this episode of Psych Boost, Fight or Flight. So we've all felt the fight or flight response. From an evolutionary perspective, it makes total sense. A predator attacks and our body goes into overdrive, giving us everything it has so we can either fight for our lives or run. If we survive and the threat is over, our bodies can return to normal. But in the modern world, our stress responses are not triggered by predators that we can run away from, fight, and then calm down. Acute stress, or short-term stress, still happens like when we're sitting for a job interview, and while some aspects might be negative, like sweating and a fast heart rate, the stress effects in this situation could be positive. The extra alertness helps you think on your feet, and you can even feel a positive short-term rush or buzz. But now we suffer from chronic stress. This is because a system that evolved to cope with immediate threats to your life are now triggered by worries like bills, meetings, or exams that are coming up in a few weeks, days, or hours. These things won't kill you. You can't run away from it, and you can't fight it. Unfortunately, our nervous system can't really tell the difference, and the following process is constantly triggered. The process of fight or flight. Firstly, you must recognise the threat. When this happens, you then enter a stress response. Your hypothalamus activates both the sympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system and triggers the endocrine system via the pituitary gland. The adrenal gland, located right above the kidney, is important for both pathways, and as you can see, is made up of the adrenal medulla and the adrenal cortex. In the endocrine system, the hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal axis, or HPA axis, activates. The hypothalamus stimulates the pituitary gland to release ACTH. This results in the secretion of the stress hormone cortisol from the adrenal cortex. In the autonomic nervous system, a specialised connection from the brain to the adrenal gland called the sympathetic adrenal medullary pathway, or SAM, is triggered, causing adrenaline and noradrenaline to be released from the adrenal medulla. The role of adrenaline and noradrenaline. Adrenaline and noradrenaline travel across the body causing a wide range of effects, including increased blood flow to the brain and skeletal muscles for fast thinking and fast action, Decreased blood flow to bodily systems that are not time critical, like the skin, digestive and immune systems. This energy is then diverted. Dilated pupils for improved vision. Faster breathing rate to increase oxygen consumption that can then be used in the muscles. Sweat production for reducing heat expected from intense physical exertion. And increased mental anxiety, attention and alertness. Stress-related illness. As you can imagine, the constant suppression of the immune and digestive systems, high blood pressure and anxiety caused by a chronic stress response can lead to physical problems and mental disorders. Stress can increase the risk of heart disease, obesity and IBS. It can cause low resistance to disease and result in depression, and has even been linked with accelerated aging. Bonus fact about the fight or flight response. Taylor, in 2000, gives an adaption to the evolutionary theory, suggesting that women have an alternate response. Pregnancy and care for infants means fighting or running is often not an option, so women are thought to tend and befriend. This improves social connections, making it more likely that they'll survive in extreme danger due to working as a group to overcome difficulties. One last message before I finish up. Chances are you might be feeling stressed, especially if you're heading into the exam season. Hopefully seeing this video will let you know that many of the chronic symptoms you might be feeling are just a side effect of evolution. They're not helpful and they can be overcome. A few quick tips. If you're stressed in the moment, focus on breathing deeply and slowly. This will cause your heart rate to decrease, countering the effects of the stress response. Also focusing on your breathing will take your mind off whatever you're stressed about. If that works for you, maybe look into something called mindfulness. 
Also, exercise, relaxing music, sleep and healthy food are your friend. If you're really struggling, please talk to someone, a friend or a family member or a teacher. Social connections are one of the best ways for us to deal with stress, preferably face-to-face. -face. I hope you found this psych boost video useful. If you did, I've made more than 140 other psychology videos to help you in your studies, as well as a website full of free resources. If you want to help Psychoos grow, subscribe and like. Also, tell your teacher and anyone else you know who studies psychology about the channel. Thanks for watching. Keep studying.